Hi there, my name's Maya, and today we're here on the beautiful Nisqually River at the 6th Avenue Handicap Access Fishing Spot. I work with the Nisqually River Education Project, and today we're going to show you how to do water quality monitoring. The first thing we need to do is measure the temperature of the water, so I'm going to hang this thermometer in the river for one minute. Salmon want cold water less than 12 degrees Celsius. The temperature of the water reads 14 degrees Celsius. The next thing we need to do is gather a bottle of river water for our sample. Let's talk safety. We're going to be doing these tests with chemicals, so it's important that we wear gloves and goggles at all times. The first test we will perform is pH, which is a measure of how acidic or basic the water is. Salmon and other aquatic animals like a neutral pH between 7 and 8 pH units. Here are all of the materials you will need to do this test. The first step is to fill each of the two tubes with 5 milliliters of sample water from the river. Next, we will add six drops of our pH indicator solution to one of the tubes. After swirling to mix, we put that tube into the right slot in the color comparator box. Next, we rotate the color wheel until we find a color that matches our sample. The number on the bottom of the comparator box will show us our pH value. The next test we're going to do is nitrates. Nitrate levels can affect dissolved oxygen and turbidity levels, so salmon want water with low nitrates, preferably less than one part per million. Here are all of the supplies you will need for this test. First, we fill one test tube with 5 milliliters of sample water. Next, we are going to add one nitrate number one tablet and cap the test tube and shake it until the tablet is dissolved. Next, we're going to add one nitrate number two tablet and immediately slide the tube into the protective sleeve. Next, we shake to dissolve again and wait five minutes. After five minutes has passed, we remove the tube from the sleeve and slide it into the OctaSlide viewer. We then move the slider until we find a color that matches our sample. This sample matches the color that corresponds with a nitrate value of one part per million. The next parameter we're going to test for is turbidity, which is a measure of how cloudy or clear the water is. Salmon want a low turbidity, less than 20 Jackson turbidity units. Here are all of the materials you will need to test the turbidity. First, we're going to fill each tube with 50 milliliters of water, one with sample water and one with distilled water. When looking down the tubes vertically, we can clearly see the dot at the bottom of the tube better in the distilled water than in the sample water. Next, we will add a half milliliter dropper full of our standard turbidity reagent to the distilled water tube. We will continue doing this half a milliliter at a time until we see the dots in each of the tubes with equal clarity. We added four dropper fulls, or two milliliters, to our distilled water, which equals 20 Jackson turbidity units. The next test we'll do is dissolved oxygen. We want to know how much oxygen is in the water because that's how salmon breathe. To test dissolved oxygen, we need to collect our water a little bit differently. First, we submerge our collection bottle under the water with the cap on, then remove the cap and tilt the bottle upward to release all of the bubbles. After holding the bottle facing upstream for one minute, we'll cap it under the water and bring it out and check that there are no bubbles. 
Here are all of the materials you will need to test dissolved oxygen. First, we will add 8 drops of chemical number 1, manganese sulfate, followed by 8 drops of chemical number 2, alkaline potassium iodide. Then we will close the bottle and invert it to mix the contents. You can see a cloudy solid has formed in the bottle, also called a precipitate. After allowing the precipitate to settle below the neck of the bottle, we will open the sample bottle and add 8 drops of chemical number 3, sulfuric acid. Next, we are going to invert to mix until all of the precipitate has dissolved. Then we will open our sample bottle and fill our B bottle with 20 milliliters of sample. Next, we will add 8 drops of chemical number 4, starch indicator solution, cap the bottle and swirl to mix. Then we will fill our titrator all the way up with chemical number 5, sodium thiosulfate. Then, starting 3 drops at a time, we will add the sodium thiosulfate to our B bottle. Swirling the mixture in between each 3 drops, we continue doing this until the solution changes color to a light purple. Once it becomes light purple, we slow down to 1 drop at a time, mixing in between. We continue adding drops until the mixture turns completely clear without a trace of purple. At this point, we look at the titrator and read it based on the lowest ring in the plunger. This one displays 8.7, which is our dissolved oxygen value in milligrams per liter.